Well, hello and welcome to Get a Better Handle on Life. I'm Barry Winbolt and this is my podcast. It's estimated that a third of adults in Western countries experience sleep problems at least once a week, with up to 10% fulfilling the criteria for insomnia disorder. So it's pretty common, and it's pretty persistent with some people. And today I'm going to be speaking to somebody who, through his doggedness, actually found a way to beat his insomnia and now gets regular sleep. So much so that he wrote a book about it. He's going to be sharing those techniques with us and giving some tips on what might work for other people. At least that's according to the feedback from the readers of his book. So today I am speaking to Manuel Grande all the way from um, Hyderabad, I believe, in, in India. Is that right? And you've written yes. a book on your trials with learning to sort out your sleep problems. So yes. let's start by hearing about the book. What is the book called and what's it about? Yeah. yeah thank you, Barry, for inviting me, firstly. Yeah. So as you said, I'm from Hyderabad. And my book is titled My Sleepless Nights, A Story of Victory Over Insomnia. So this is my first-hand experience of how I went into insomnia, how I struggled with insomnia, and how I came out of insomnia. So the book is my personal story of how I have uh, got, I mean, overcome this problem of insomnia. Okay, so you've struggled with insomnia. How long did you, did you have that problem? <laughs> yeah, so in a nutshell, I would say... Uh, Approximately six months was the time frame I struggled with this. But actually, this is a very tricky question, Barry, uh, because I, I generally don't answer this question for the simple reason that uh, I, as a person, and you as a person, and Manohar and Barry are completely different individuals. So you may take something and get it in just two days, whereas I may take more than 20 days or sometimes even two months or sometimes even two years. So comparing a person with, with another person is often the biggest problem that I see. So that is that's what I would say. Very true. I was asking more to see, um, because I've worked with people with insomnia and other sleep problems, and quite often they suffer with this inconvenience, shall we call it, for quite a long time before doing anything about it. Um, but it seems as if you took it seriously quite early on. Yeah. So, yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I was having these uh, experiences of uh, sleep problems on and off right from my teenage years. So it's not that, uh, but it, Never went into a stage where it bothered me, actually. But um, that six months which I was talking about was something which bothered me very badly, is what I would say. Okay. And were you working at this time while you were having these sleep yes. problems? And what were you working at? Yeah, so I am working in the IT industry since the last 15 years. And exactly in the frame, 2019-ish time frame, so 2018 end to 2019 starting was when I had this issue. Okay. Uh, I was working in the same company which I'm currently working. Okay, so you've had a job for a long time and then all of a sudden this sleep uh, insomnia problem arose for you. Have you ever linked that to any particular incidents or was it chance or do you have a note, do you have an idea of any causes or causal factors? <laughs> so yeah so this is uh, something which i see people think that insomnia or anything is just a one off phenomena which we where we can point to one thing but what i feel very based on my understanding and talking with other people also insomnia or any mental health condition is not something that comes uh, immediately it's it's a compounding so so, for example, uh, let's say that I start smoking. So the first cigarette will not uh, start start making me sick. But 
over a period of time this thing this habit starts compounding and that is when the body starts feeling that it's not something it can take so that is that is my take on it so insomnia yeah i would say uh, there were few things here and there personal disturbances professional disturbances but i i would say that it was a compounding uh, of so many things that were there and the core thing was fomo which is fear of missing out fear of missing out what on what uh, miss, missing out on a lot of things personally uh, or if there was someone who were getting uh, away ahead of me maybe that those were the things uh, yeah. i agree with you about the mental health component or sleep it's never one factor and like you i get a bit impatient with people who look for causes the whole time however as a as a therapist i'm aware too that very often people will have shall we say a vulnerability to something without and it doesn't actually express itself and then something pushes them over the edge um you know extra stress at work coupled with a life event or whatever it happens to be and i agree with you we're all different so there's no we can't do a checklist but what i'm interested in is at just as you say there's no single factor equally there's probably not one night when you're sleeping very well and the next night you would call yourself an insomniac so you know that builds It's... over time and there usually are um i was going to say concomitant but there are usually factors in life that are running parallel to that which they may not be causing it but they're not making things any easier yes yes i i totally agree with you and like like i said right uh, so i i always uh, think uh, it as is a compound effect that that keeps so so it is it is a cumulative so things start snowballing into the thing so or i would put it uh, in this way so insomnia or any mental health condition is the fruit or the flower which you see on the outside but the root problem is something uh, that would have built something so because the root has the issue obviously the fruit will have the issue yes so you used to, when in an earlier conversation i had with you 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 found a way through this i won't It's... say a remedy but you found a a style in your life that allowed you to resolve this sleep difficulty mm -hmm. All right, just checking my my dog just came into the room. Um yeah. and um and I lost my thread a bit. So you yes, and and I rem and I remember you using the word that you were trying various things in desperation. And yes. I I really that really resonated with me. So can you yeah. explain what you mean what you mean by that about searching yeah. for a solution in desperation yes 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 i will definitely tell you this so just like uh, every other person uh, i am no different so if something comes i just try to find the quick solution so the quick solution which any anyone can think of is in a form of a sleeping pill or some kind of a sleep aid or some some kinds of things that will put you to sleep so the thing is yeah it's it's okay to try this thing so for example a sleep aid uh it were uh, maybe there, it could be something like there are something called as uh, some kind of noise generation generated things that start you can start putting in your room and that gives you some kind of a good fe uh, feeling and that will help you sleep much better but then if you start putting that noise generating machine so it's called a white noise machine or something like that so if you put that white noise machine uh, like you talked about the situation like let's say that i figured out that i am struggling with sleep and someone suggests to me that why don't you put a white noise machine so if i start putting that white noise machine and then start putting pressure on myself saying that i i have the white noise machine but still i am not sleeping, sleeping. then i go to some other solution maybe blind blinding the uh, putting the room into pitch dark and having those blackout curtains and all those things 
So now you start do investing in that. And now you used to say, I, I tried the white noise machine, I tried the blackout curtains, I tried the supplement, I tried these things. Why is it that I'm not sleeping? The problem here is, I tried, uh, to be honest, like I tried things like they, are, they were suggesting, which is to journal, which is to put some time off from the screens and all those things. It's not that I didn't try. But then the problem was, I put so much pressure that this thing should work. So it is like I'm doing things in an anticipation that this thing will work. And that creates the problem is what I feel. Okay, so you tried several things, white noise, blackout curtains and supplements and things that were recommended by other people, things you came across. But in answer to my question about desperation, that you, you, were, you were applying those or trying those with a notion of success in your mind. Yes which automatically yes. puts pressure on you. Now, yes. this is very interesting to me personally as well, because in a lot of my work training other people in various things like conflict resolution, or it could be sleep, but uh, more about communications and getting results that people want, I've always said to them, of course, we want success, but forget that. Hold it very lightly, because if you have a fixed idea about success, you could walk right by a solution, you know, because it's not the success that you envisaged. So it's better yes. to leave yourself open to learning. Would you agree with that? Yes, yes, I 100% agree with you. And uh, yeah, if the, as long as you have the, the beginner mindset, which is yes. to learn from each and everything, so learning from your failure. So so it should just be a beginner mindset where you learn from everything. In fact, there's a very beautiful story from the Zen, which I, re I recollect. So what happens is uh, there was a, a very learned professor. Uh, I don't know what. Uh, so he, was, he goes to a Buddhist monastery uh, and then he starts talking about mindfulness and all those things. So he he quotes all the academic research and he goes on and on, goes on and on, on and on. And then the monk says, let's have some tea because I see you are you may be tired. Then the professor says, yeah, let's have some tea. Then the monk starts pouring from the cup and he keeps pouring, 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 pouring. Uh, and the tea starts overflowing. Then the professor says, what are you doing? Why are you pouring it over and over again? So the, the, the monk says that if you come with a full cup attitude, you will never learn. So... Uh, you will always the things will overflow. You have you need to empty your cup, and only then you will be able to learn. So that that definitely goes with what you were talking about, which is to have an open mind for sure. Yes, be receptive and observant about what's going on about you. You're listening to Get a Better Handle on Life with me, Barry Winbolt. I'm speaking to Manohar Grande about how he conquered insomnia. So to come back to this idea of desperation, I believe you eventually found a solution and that was, can you tell us about that? Yeah. So, so Barry, like uh, I said, I kept hopping from one, one hack to the other or something like that. And to be honest, like I got this idea while I was studying about uh, uh, so the, the the thing that really helped me was meditation. So I read about this meditation, started practicing it also. But like I told, right, I was always envisioning the success. So it was like I, I start doing meditation now and immediately the, today, tonight I'll, I'll see the results. So that was the thing that was seen. So what I did was I started with breath meditation. Then I went to chanting meditation. So chanting meditation is where you have an affirmation or a word or yes. something like that. Yeah. So the breath meditation is observing the breath. And then I went to some other form of meditation called heartfulness meditation, where all you do is focus your attention on the heart, heartbeats, that kind of a thing. Uh, and then it, it was like I was just hopping from one form to the other, expecting some instant success. But then what happened was um, I was uh, during this period, I was also talking with a psychologist just like you, Barry. So what he told me was conclusively this thing. It, you, you, if you keep hopping and don't stick to one, you will never see the result. 
So just stick to one thing which is easiest for you. So if the breath meditation is easiest, let's go with the breath meditation. If the chanting seems easy for you, let's go with the chanting. If whatever. So just stick with one. And he all he told me was just create small micro habits, which is like five minutes of so you need not even start with five. Just start with three minutes of meditation. Just put a timer for three minutes and do it. So the brain, the way it is, it keeps wandering. It, can't, it keeps thinking like whether I'll sleep tonight, what what will happen and all those things. So you need to just come, say, okay, so just come back to the breath. Keep coming back to the breath. Keep coming back to the breath. What exactly you're doing is actually our brain, the way it is, uh, it has more than 60,000 to 70,000 thoughts per day. And most of them are recycled thoughts, so which are repetitive thoughts. So either it's in the past or in the future. So what you're actually training is by meditation, you're bringing it to the present moment. So just staying in the present moment. So for, forget about whether I'll sleep tonight or all those things. You are enjoying the present moment right here, right now. So that is how I kept retraining my mind and uh, that is when the desperation was, uh, I like you talked about, was completely gone, and I was able to sleep much better. So you, you were, you feel you're in desperation because you were hopping from one form of meditation to another, and eventually mm -hmm. you settled on one that suited you. And I think it's interesting that that psychologist said to you, "Choose what is easiest for you," because clearly yeah. we all breathe all the time. So yeah. use that. For example, other people might do chanting. or So it's, we have to find our own way and then practice, 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 start very simply, build up until it becomes an easier habit to do daily and you find the changes happening. But nowhere in that, and I'm not surprised, but some people might be, and nowhere in that have you talked or thought about sleep. You've thought about yourself, you've thought about meditation and the benefits that that brings. And as a byproduct of that, your sleep began to improve. Is that fair yes. to say? Yes, I, I totally agree with you. So, so to be honest, I'm not saying that I never thought about sleep. So when I started this habit initially, I was uh, skeptical and I kept thinking like what will happen and all those things. But the more I kept doing these things, the more I was in the present moment. So coming back to the present moment. So let's say that initially in a three-minute meditation, I was just able to do two or three seconds in the present moment. So I, I was able to put myself in 15 to 20 seconds in the present moment. So that is what I, I was doing. I was just coming to the present moment right here, right now. And yeah, so it's not that always uh, the, the meditation will always bring you to the present moment. So it's, it's okay. So... The more you start allowing your mind to calm down, the better are your chances that you'll be able to go to sleep. Yes. And when would you say, having decided one day to stick with one form of meditation, at what point did you notice your sleep improving? Yeah, <laughs> yeah this is a very interesting question. So I, I noticed uh, after two weeks some kind of improvement. But it was not, so it's not a linear uh, thing, no, Barry. So no, what understand. happened was after two weeks, suddenly, I don't know, like a, a period of or about of, uh, I, it looks like I, I completely fell down. So and I almost was uh, willing to give it up. But then I just persisted with it. And then after a few days, I saw some, some good improvement. And then again, it fell down. So it was never a linear curve kind of a thing. So no. I felt like I was moving three steps forward, sometimes two steps back, or sometimes even three steps back. But the minute you keep persisting with that practice, that is when actually it starts building the strength. So our brain is also, uh, the more you keep repeating this thing, right, uh, the, those new neural pathways start becoming stronger and stronger. And this becomes the new default. Instead of worry, being the default, the relaxation becomes the new default. And the more you invest time on relaxation, right, the better are your chances to go to sleep. Because, of course, you're retraining the mind at that point, aren't you? Yes. yes. And yes. I'm very interested. You, you used a, a very similar uh, 
explanation or description that I use with a lot of my clients. It's two steps forward, one step back, and or, or whatever. And the point is, when, you, when you're making progress and you take a step or two back, you feel as if you haven't made any progress. But if you look at it as a rising graph, then, of course, even if you're two steps back, you're still way ahead of where you were, say, 10 steps ago or 20 steps ago. So I, I say the same thing to people. Just hang in there and have faith and keep doing it. And don't wait to immediately for results. And indeed, you're talking about focusing on the present moment. And just do that through a habit daily, I guess. Yes. Is that what you did? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So, uh, in fact, this is uh, this is actually called as mindfulness, which is to bring to the present moment. And there is a lot of uh, science and studies providing the benefits of mindfulness. So, a simple thing uh, I can say is, the brain by default is there to protect us. So it can start looking for any and every form of danger. So it can either pro protect us from the things that happened in the past, or it can start thinking about all these things that can go wrong in the future. But when you bring to the present moment right here, right now, right, the brain that is thinking about protection is slowly shut down. So it's not that uh, it's not like you switch it off and you shut it down, but you you're not giving importance to that. You're bringing to the present moment. And that is when actually when you're not in a fight or flight mode, that is when your rest and digest, which is the other part of the uh, nervous system, which is responsible for the recovery that takes more precedence and all the changes, like whatever may be your health ailments and all that yeah. improves a lot. Yes, and that's also um, what a lot of people call the rest activity cycle. So, yes. you know, and we it is actually a trigger. The breath is a trigger for that to move you from an alert state to a relaxed state. And that is a physiological response. I think people yes. often forget this with meditation or breathing exercises or any of these approaches, even with yoga, that actually what you're doing is you're giving the body a holiday, you're giving the body a rest, you're switching it into a mode where you can process unwa unwanted stuff, both physically, but also psychologically. Yeah. And so even if, say, for example, somebody th sits there meditating, thinks this isn't working, I pretty much guarantee you that if you put a blood pressure meter, what a, a cuff on your arm, you will see that your blood pressure is going down. And there are other ways of testing the breathing uh, in yoga, you know, left and right nostril and that type yes. of thing to check heris, he, left and right hem, hemispheric activity in the brain. So these are real physiological changes that I think a lot of people, they, they hear so much about meditation and they don't realize that it is a very powerful tool for affecting the body in positive ways. And yes. if I can give it a little plug for anybody listening to this, I'd also say that, you know, you're doing it all the time. You're not doing that. You're potentially doing yourself harm. So why wouldn't you learn to do it? Um, but it's almost sometimes as if our mind is conspiring against us. Do you find? Yes. Yes, I 100% I, I agree with you. If, uh, that. If we don't that, tame uh, it, if it, if it, if we don't train it to work for us, it'll work against us. Is is yes. my kind of way of thinking about yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So, in fact, there's a saying also that a mind is a good servant but a bad master. Yeah. So what? So te let's come back to the book again, Manaha. Uh, you know, yeah. you were saying that um, you've you've written this book. Uh, I think you've 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 written a second one now as well. I believe. Have you two books? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I have totally published three, self-published three books. Okay. Uh, yeah. And they're, so, they're available on Amazon. Yes, all of them are available so, on Amazon. So sell the book to me. Why should somebody buy the book? You know, they're having trouble sleeping. What will they learn? Because it's okay. fine us talking in this kind of informed way about meditation. But what are the steps that people will learn from the book? Yeah. So, yeah, the, the one reason why you should buy a, buy my book uh, is it's it's like uh, there's a very uh, thing like 
you will find all over the internet suggestions like like i talked about initially the white noise machine or all these kinds of things right so so the things are like you you like you can see the journey of mine like how i so i put it in this way barry which is like how i planted the seed how i nurtured the seed I, by nurturing i mean how i watered the seed and how it made a mess mess in my life and how i uprooted the seed of the insomnia so i feel this is how nature is like you need you when you plant a seed you take it, it's not that you instantly see some result uh, once you nurture it that is when a small plant starts showing up and once the nature will do this thing which is like it starts growing and if it's something which is bothering you how you can uproot the seed so so like in my case the uprooting of the seed is not giving attention to the anxiety or the thought process that will i sleep tonight will i not sleep tonight so that is that is how so in fact like i was also diagnosed that i was having anxiety and i was given anti anxiety pills so so what happened was initially when the pills were given i like i said i continued on the practice of meditation with every doctor visit right my dosage was always tapered down to half every time so after the first month it was tapered down to half the next month from the half it went to another half so it is it became the one fourth so in fact like i talked with many people and everyone is like saying like uh, how do i get rid of these pills because i know like they are for the short term only but how do i get rid of the pills so you can understand and see the real life story so this the the beauty is you need not uh, even uh, struggle with sleep issue but you will understand what are the mistakes that i made how i activated the fight or flight response like you beautifully talked about have always being on the flight or flight response compromises the body of its capabilities and how you can activate your rest and digest and how you can get better so that is so with the simple thing like how you if you do these things how will it help you so and the be- be- best part is it's just a 60 page read so you can just skim it uh, in less less than a hour or so so that is the reason why you should buy my book called my sleepless nights so it really is a recipe for getting your sleep habits back on track and yes i like the metaphors about the, how do you nourish the bad habit or the habit you don't want how have you kept it alive and then how do you uproot it and then also how you plant the seed of a new habit and then you have to start yes. nourishing that through practice or or whatever well it sounds you're certainly the living example of this working for you um do you get feedback from your readers about this yeah in fact like i have got very good feedback from multiple people whoever has read this book so you can you also see the reviews on amazon so everyone has been uh, praising my book so in fact uh, like in one of the review uh, the uh, it was by a book reviewer and he even said that this book is uh, if you just want to read a book on sleep everyone would recommend the book why we sleep by matt walker so it's a, it's a quite dense read and it talks about lot of technical jargon and all those things but whereas my book uh, though i have touched uh, about sleep the the sympathetic uh, the parasympathetic nervous system yeah, yeah. i talked about neuroplasticity so it was in a very simple language so that is that is the appreciation which i got for so the book so it's really a manual for improving your sleep without unnecessary packaging around it yes well yeah. thank you so much yeah. manohar grandi for speaking to me today and yeah. i wish you all the best with your sleep studies or your continued good sleep Yeah thank you Barry and I had a great time interacting with you. I I learned some things from you also. Good. Well, I'm glad it was a fair exchange then. Thank okay. you so much. Bye bye. All the best. And that's it for this episode. Many thanks to Manohar Grande. His book is called A Story of Victory Over Insomnia. It's available on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description to this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. If it's been useful, please spread it around and help support me by subscribing. 
All the best. Until next time, this is Barry Wimbolt, and this has been Get a Better Handle on Life. Goodbye. Goodbye.